The stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we are continuing our playthrough of the Innsmouth Conspiracy campaign with the second scenario. This is The Vanishing of Alina Harper. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the channel. This is scenario two of the Innsmouth Conspiracy. Uh, this will be a blind playthrough with Silas Marsh. Uh, I have not played this uh, scenario before, so I am looking forward to bringing it to you today. This is a, a very interesting scenario. We are hunting for suspects and hideouts in Innsmouth of the, uh, I guess, the uh, person or perpetrator who uh, kidnapped uh, Alina Harper. So we shall see if uh, Silas can track them down. Uh, just a reminder that if you are a patron of the channel, stay tuned for the... Uh, Vanishing of Alina Harper Patreon post-game show where I will talk about uh, my impressions of how the deck performed and uh, also my impressions of the uh, scenario, which uh, is uh, going to be uh, really looking forward to this one. I've heard good things about it. Don't know a whole lot about it other than that uh, I have to go and find uh, some suspects in the hideout. So we'll see if, uh, if Silas's knowledge of uh, Innsmouth can uh, can pay off and uh, he can do that. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these blind playthroughs. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tier of your choice and claim your rewards. That would be awesome. Without further ado, let's get started. We'll take a quick look at the deck. I haven't updated the deck list, but uh, we did earn uh, two unspent experience points during uh, the Pit of Despair uh, in the uh, two playthroughs we did. Both of them basically ended up the same, so I ended up taking the results of the, uh, the one that uh, is available on the channel. Uh, we were able to spend those experience points uh, before we played The Vanishing of Alina Harper, and so we uh, removed the two copies of Daring for two copies of Unrelenting, which is an amazing, uh, an, an absolutely amazing skill for Silas, and I'm uh, very much looking forward to, uh, to seeing how it performs. I've been playing it a little bit in a Reedy Young deck uh, the past uh, week or so, and uh, it, uh, it has proven to be quite good, so uh, I think it will be even better in, uh, in Silas. Other than that, no uh, no changes to the deck, just the two copies of Unrelenting. So uh, we will hopefully earn some more experience points and uh, be able to make some more upgrades. Unfortunately, we did draw that very nasty weakness uh, in uh, the Pit of Despair, the uh, Unspeakable Oath Cowardice. I can't remember which one it is. The one that prevents us, we, we lose two experience points unless we investigate a, uh, a, a location that has no clues. And of course, this deck doesn't have a ton of investigation in it. it I think it has just enough. So uh, we may want to pick up some copies of Perception at some point to just to, to boost, uh, give this deck a little bit more in the uh, investigation department. But we'll see how we do. Here is a summary of the campaign so far. During uh, the Pit of Despair, we recorded a meeting with uh, Thomas Dawson, which I think everybody gets to do, regardless of, uh, of uh, unless you really uh, have an epic fail in that scenario. We also recorded a decision to stick together uh, in the first playthrough that was recorded, but no sound. Uh, we, I believe we broke up a cult meeting or something like that. So. Uh, basically the same sort of thing, except in this case we get to remove one tablet uh, from the Chaos Bag, which we did, and we recorded the two additional experience under Unspent Experience. So not a whole lot of, uh, not much campaign uh, in the campaign log, but I suspect there will be plenty in, uh, in this particular scenario. We are set up and uh, ready to go over in Octagon. Here is our setup for vanishing uh, the vanishing of Alina Harper. I have so little knowledge of this, I had to look up how it's set up, and I only read the act and agenda cards here uh, as I was setting it up. So this should be uh, this should be a, it's either going to be go okay or it will be a total mess. So we shall see. Not very happy, of course, to see a four shroud location here at Innsmouth Square. That will be. Uh, quite difficult for uh, for Silas to deal with right off the bat. 
However, <clears throat> excuse me, we do have the Little Bookshop, uh, First National Grocery, Gilman House, Innsmouth Square, and then on the other side we've got Marsh Refinery, Fish Street Bridge, and finally Innsmouth Harbor. The uh, hideout of the suspect who kidnapped uh, Alina Harper, or maybe it's not Alina, maybe it's Thomas Dawson, I'm not too sure which, uh, those locations will go in uh, in these spots here below these locations and we also have to find ourselves the suspect. All of those are in uh, the leads deck which uh, we put together. I have over here we have our finding agent Harper uh, list of possible suspects. There are six and possible hideouts there are six. These two are I set these aside at the beginning of the game, so uh, those are that is one suspect and one hideout. So through process of elimination, we will attempt to identify who they are, and uh, we will go from there. So Agenda 1A is decrepit decay. Furtiveness and secretness seem universal in this hushed sh city of, alien of alienage and death and I could not escape the sensation of being watched from ambush on every hand by sly and staring eyes that never shut. H.P. Uh, Lovecraft, The Shadow Over Innsmouth. It has the forced effect, if you defeat a suspect enemy other than the kidnapper, take control of each clue on that enemy and record in your campaign log, that enemy is out for blood. So uh, that is interesting. And it has a doom threshold of six. Over here on Act 1A, we have the search for Agent Harper. The next morning, you and Agent Dawson split up and search for the missing agent. So I guess we are trying to find Agent Harper. Uh, Dawson, of course, uh, is killed by the uh, whatever that abomination was down the amalgam down in uh, the Pit of Despair. This has the free triggered ability. The investigators spend X clues per investigator as a group. Parlay. Uh, reveal the top X cards of the leads deck to a maximum of three and draw one of them. Shuffle the rest back into the leads deck along with the top card of the encounter deck group limit once per round. Objective, you may advance at the end of any round. Hint, you will have to make an accusation when you advance. Advance when uh, you believe you have narrowed down Agent Harper's kidnapper and whereabouts. So I think ideally... Um, we would like to try to, uh, because you shuffle them back in, or I guess, what's the best way of doing this? We, we get a free trigger ability, so if we spend a clue, we get to take the top card of the deck, and we will automatically know what it is, but then we'd need like 10 clues to burn through the deck. But if we use three clues, we only have to shuffle one. The more times we do this, the more encounter cards we shuffle into the deck, which is probably bad. So uh, we probably want to try to maximize, probably spend as many clues as we can uh, to see, uh, determine the leads, and then we can, uh, we can mark them off as we go along. Maybe I should have a piece of paper for this one. It might uh, make sense. Do I have a pen? So we'll see. We'll see how we do here and uh, whether we can identify the suspects. Uh, we are playing The Vanishing of Alina Harper on standard difficulty. The skulls are minus X, where X is the current agenda number, so they are going to start off at 1. The cultists are minus 2, and if you fail, place 1 doom on the nearest enemy. Uh, that is not good. Uh, tablets are minus 3, and if you fail, take a horror. That is very bad. Uh, especially for poor Silas. And the Elder Things are minus four. If you play a fail, place one of your clues on your location. That is also very bad for Silas. So Tablets and uh, Elder Things are equally, uh, are both pretty nasty for poor Silas here. We don't have a ton of sanity to spare, and uh, we do not want to waste our precious clues uh, losing them to the Elder Things. So... Man, trying to go plus four is going to be uh, difficult. So we shall see how this goes. 
Uh, of course, we have Silas here. We have our weakness. I don't think we have any other setup to worry about. 25 cards in the encounter deck. So it's, I mean, it's fairly typical. And we have um, our leads deck here. And then we have a bunch of cards that uh, are set aside at the beginning of the game. Uh, those being the, uh, the winged one, which is uh, a monster. And the, of course, the ubiquitous hunting night gaunt, which we have been uh, dealing with uh, often since, off and on since the core set. And uh, we also have Agenda 3A and Act 2A. So I assume we won't be putting those into play until we manage to make an accusation against one of the uh, one of these nasty perpetrators up here. So we have uh, Brian Burnham, Athera Gilman, who is uh, the owner of the Gilman House, the uh, the famous uh, hotel that. Uh, plays a big role in Shadow over Innsmouth. Uh, Joyce Little, the owner of the bookshop. Barnabas Marsh, of course, uh, of the Marsh family. Zodok Allen, the, uh, I guess, the homeless man who uh, who is also plays a, a pretty important role in uh, Shadow over Innsmouth and uh, Robert Friendly. Possible hideouts include the Innsmouth Jail, the Shorewood Slums, Sawbone Alley, the house on, Walters, on Water Street, the Esoteric Order of Dagon and New Church Green. Okay, I think we're ready to draw our opening hand and uh, see how we do here. So let's shuffle up our deck one more time. So what are we looking for in our opening hand? Obviously we need some sort of clue. We need to get clues because that's the only way we can figure out uh, what is going on with the uh, who to accuse when the time comes. Uh, map is fairly big, as uh, I think most of them are in this particular campaign, so uh, the uh, track shoes would be very nice, and of course uh, Peter Sylvester, uh, who will uh, help us uh, prop up our sanity. So let's see how we do here. All the usual, whoa, nice, look at that. What a nice, uh, what a nice hand. We have the track shoes and uh, Peter Sylvester. And a copy of Unrelenting, uh, Lucky and Not Without a Fight. So we will, uh, we will mulligan those three and hopefully we can get some sort of, uh, there is another copy of Unrelenting, of course. There's True Understanding and Not Without a Fight. So that was, uh, Seems to me my typical mulligan, where I mulligan three cards and end up with uh, several of those cards back in my hand. So the only new card we got was True Understanding, but we did get the Track Shoes and Peter. So we are going to have an excellent uh, agility uh, as we go through this, uh, this particular game. True understanding will let us discover a clue, but we don't have a lot of ways of discovering clues here. So we will have to try to... Uh, man, getting this clue here at Innsmouth Square is going to be very difficult. Uh, and uh, Innsmouth Square, four shroud location, one clue. Innsmouth Central, resign. You may decide to lay low. You decide to lay low for a while, and then it has the free triggered ability. Spend two resources, move to a connecting Innsmouth uh, location. So I think we'll start things off. Uh, let's get our three actions here first off, and uh, let's use the first one to get Peter out. And I'm very tempted just to go Peter, track shoes, uh, Peter, resource, track shoes, and uh, and go from there. So let's do that. We don't have a good way of investigating at the moment, so let's. Uh, we might as well just get our a couple of good assets out there. That bumps our uh, that bumps our agility up to six. Gives us some horror soak and uh, gives us a little bit of extra movement. So that will be our first turn. Very straightforward. And we will move to the upkeep phase. We get a second copy of True Understanding. Wow, that's not a... It's not great. Uh, I mean, it's, it is a way to discover a clue without, um, 
without taking an action, but we do need a we do need to pass a skill test on a scenario card. So hopefully we will draw an agility treachery. That would be good. First mythos phase of the game, one of six doom, and our encounter card is going to be false lead. If you have no clue, oh, oh yeah, false leads in this set. That sucks. Again, bad for bad for investigators who have trouble uh, with clues, especially uh, bad for uh, Silas here since uh, it's a four intellect skill test, and uh, he has two. But we have no clues. So even if we had somehow managed to get this clue at the Innsmouth Square, we probably would have lost it here. But instead, uh, this just gains Surge. Surges into Hunting Shadow. You must either spend a clue or take two damage. So that's uh, two cards from the Midnight Masks encounter set to start things off and we've already taken two damage. Well, how do we do this? Now we do have Unrelenting, which gives us some card draw we could use to draw a couple cards. Um, but it also would help us seal some of these these uh, tablets and elder things away so we don't have to deal with them. Uh, but a four shroud location is not uh, not going to help us. So let's move uh, let's move over here to uh, the first national grocery. Grocery stores. Oh, three shroud location. Okay, so search the top six cards of your deck for an item card. Add it to your hand. Shuffle your deck. So no help there. So let's use the track shoes to try to uh, move for free. So that is our first action. And so we're going 3v3 or 6v3. Skull is a minus one. So we move all the way over here. I believe uh, that is connected. This is the sort of drop, I guess, or the swirl. So yes, that is, uh, that's a little better. Two shroud location with two clues. Uh, after you fail a skill test while investigating the little bookshop, shuffle the top card of the encounter deck into the leads deck. Ouch. Ouch, 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 ouch. Not, uh, not really where we want to be. Uh, where did this clue go? There should be a clue here. Did I uh, delete it somehow? Uh, okay, well. So just making skill tests here is not going to be very useful. So I think at this point we need to draw some cards. We need a uh, we need to find some of our clue discovery tech here. So let's draw a card, and there is our weakness, of course. So we're already earning two fewer experience points in this scenario. Oh, it goes in my hand, I guess. Uh, yeah, secretly add to your hand. Oh, it's curiosity, unspeakable oath, curiosity. I said cowardice, I believe. So when the game ends or you are eliminated, if this card is in your hand or in two fewer experience points, after you successfully investigate a location with no clues on it, we can discard it. So uh, not great. I guess we will draw one more card. Uh, there's a take heart. I guess that... If we fail a skill test, we can get a couple more cards. That's okay. Uh, but no, none of our investigation uh, tech has appeared. We get a grizzly totem during the upkeep phase. Not bad if we can commit cards to skill tests. Um, maybe those true understandings, if we, uh, if we need to investigate, that could, be, could come in handy. So 
probably get that down on the table here at some point uh, in this game. But uh, unfortunately, no ability to get clues at the moment. Two Doom of Six during the Mythos phase, and we will draw a card. We draw the Initiate of Dagon. Spawns at any empty location. Humanoid hybrid cultist. Two fight, one health, two evade. When Initiate of Dagon has no Doom on it, it gets plus two fight and plus two evade. At the end of the round, if Initiate of Dagon is ready and there is no Doom on it, place one Doom on it. And it has, it will deal one sanity damage. Okay. Um, so it's kind of tough to kill right now. We can do it though. We have not without a fight. That's not an issue. Uh, not without a fight would be, we'd be 6v4. And then we could commit unrelenting. Seal the good tokens. Draw two cards, then pull unrelenting back to our hand. I think that is our plan. So let's put the initiate of Dagon here at Gilman House. And we will go kill it, or try to kill it. So we will move here. We will engage the initiate. Two shroud location with one clue at Gilman House. Uh, heal two damage or two horror, or any combination thereof, limit once per game. So this seems to be our good spot here for investigating. Uh, or at least to make some blind investigation checks. So let's commit, uh, let us attack the initiate. We will commit, not without a fight, and unrelenting. We are going to seal... Um, We're going to seal good tokens, so plus one, zero, and the elder, th elder sign. And then if we result, when we reveal a chaos token, we can return a skill committed to our task to the hand, so we can pull unrelenting back and draw two cards. So that is our plan. So let's go seal some tokens. Uh, we're going to look at them all. So we're going to seal this one, this one, and this one. I think I can do all three of them just as one. Uh, where is my seal? Seal tokens. Okay, so we've sealed those on unrelenting. We get to draw two cards. Uh, after you commit unrelenting, search, we did. Seal, we did. So we get to draw two cards. We get another copy of Peter and another copy of Grizzly Totem. Uh, we have committed not without a fight. So we are going 6v4. Because we get an extra, we are engaged with one enemy. So it gains an extra token. So we're 6v4. First pull from the bag, or no, not our first pull. Uh, we pull a minus two. So that pays off for us. Uh, so we will pull unrelenting back to our hand. And just want to make sure everything ended, ended up back. It did. So we pull unrelenting back to our hand. 
Uh, we discard the not without a fight, and this thing dies because it takes a damage. Uh, it was four fight because it had uh, no doom on it. And yeah, so that's that. Okay, well, that worked out really well. Unrelenting is as awesome as I thought it would be. However, we need some clues, which is not uh, two v two is not the position we want to be in here. Um, we've got eight cards in our hand already, but we could throw a take heart to this and tr let's pitch a take heart to an investigation here. We're going to go 2v2, but uh, if we fail, we're going to get two cards and two resources. Chaos bag. Oh, for Pete's sakes, chaos bag. <laughs> okay, well, we'll take the clue. Uh, I guess that's fine. Uh, actually, uh, we can pull that take heart back to our hand. Is it once per limit once per round? Ah, shoot. Okay, well, we can't do that. So we lose the take heart. That's okay. I mean, we we have unrelenting for card draw if necessary. Uh, but we do get a clue. Where are our clues going here? Uh, oh, there is only one clue there. All right. Well, we did grab a clue. So good start. Well, I guess. We did get a clue. We'll be happy about that. Uh, so we draw a resourceful. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we are not in position to use true understanding during the mythos phase. Uh, three of six doom. Fog over Innsmouth. Hazard, revelation, test three willpower. If you succeed, either take one horror or put fog over Innsmouth into play next to the agenda deck. If you fail, do both. Each location gets plus one shroud. Ooh, yikes. At the end of the round, discard one copy of Fog over Innsmouth from play, max once per round. So we're going two versus three. Unfortunately, this would be a time for true understanding to shine. I'm not overly concerned about taking the horror. Uh, adding Shroud is a bigger deal right now. Um... So let's do we bother committing Peter? If we commit Peter, we're still at 3v3. No, I'm not going to commit Peter. We'll just save him. Chaos Bag gives us a cultist. Minus two, if you fail, place a doom on the nearest enemy. So committing Peter would have done us no good at all. We place fog over Innsmouth uh, next to the agenda deck. I'm going to actually put it just in my threat area so I can see it. Uh, so we take a horror, which uh, Peter will gladly soak for us. And at the end of the round, we get to discard that card. So... Okay, it's our turn again. Again, the lack of draw is sort of her, uh, the lack of clue discovery is hurting us here. Um, I think I'm gonna play the Grizzly Totem. So at least we can now jack, we can add uh, a couple another icon to true understanding so it basically becomes an unexpected courage at this point uh, we can also do it with resourceful uh, stuff like that uh, let's move let's go check out this area uh, we will use the shoes to go 6v3 
we get a minus three, so that's fine. And we go to Fish Street Bridge, two shroud location, one clue, as we can take a double action to gain four resources. All right, well, we do have a way to discover some clues now. So what do we have in our discard pile? Uh, nothing that interesting. So I think I'm going to commit true understanding. Oh, we can't do that. We cannot commit true understanding. So we've got to commit resourceful. Hmm. Fortunately, we don't really have a good target in our discard pile for resourceful. Uh, and it is a three shroud location this turn. Hmm. I think I'm going to go check out the harbor. Um, Innsmouth Harbor, three shroud location, two clues. Forced after you successfully investigate Innsmouth Harbor by three or more. I don't think that is a big threat. Uh, look at the top card of the leads deck, then shuffle the leads deck. Oh, that would be okay. I don't think we're going to be able to do that, but um, uh, so if we can draw, what do we need? We need like a look what I found at this point here. But we are in a position to use true understanding also, so uh, that will be our turn again. There's the old key ring. All right. Okay, that is good. Now we can... Now we can reduce the shroud value at Fish Street Bridge to zero. So we can easily get that clue. Uh, at the end of the round, fog disappears. And that's going to be our turn. Four of six, and we haven't, uh, haven't made a ton of progress yet. So, oh, there's Crypt Chill, of course. Uh, 4v3, or 4v2. So let's commit True Understanding and Peter Sylvester. Man, do we go all in on this one? We could commit, I think we can commit both true understandings here. In which case we would discover both clues. Two, three, four, five, six. Six v four. Hmm. It's very tempting. Uh, we could also toss an unrelenting in there uh, to seal. To seal some tokens. I think we're if we're gonna do this, let's go big. Let's uh, give it a try. This this could really hurt us in the end, but we're gonna commit. Uh, both copies of that and that. Then we're going to go in and seal. We're going to seal these tokens. The uh, Elder Things and the Tablets. To improve our odds. Of passing this. All right. Okay, and we will use the Grizzly Totem to add uh, a willpower skill icon to Peter Sylvester. So we are going two, four, five, six, V4. This could be big. 
Chaos Bag says Elder Thing, or sorry, Elder Sign. That is awesome. Uh, you may commit a skill from your discard pile to this skill test. After this skill test ends, return that skill to your hand. Um, so you may commit a skill from your discard pile to this skill test. After this skill test ends, return that skill to your hand instead of discarding it. So we can commit Take Heart. I don't think we have any other skill. Well, we've got to look uh, not without a... F Ooh! Uh, we cannot commit that. So let's commit a Take Heart. We draw the token, so now we can pull Unrelenting back to our hand. Man, Unrelenting is so awesome. Uh, so those go back in the bag. We will pull Take Heart back uh, because of our Elder Sign ability. And we discover two clues here at the Innsmouth Harbor. So that, uh, that gamble paid off. That gamble paid off very handsomely for us. So man, unrelenting is just so good. How can that cost one XP? Really? Like I get to seal all the worst tokens before I pull, then after I pull, I get to pull it back. So good. All right, well, we did discover two clues and we didn't lose anything to the Crypt Chill. So that was a very good Mythos phase for us. Now, we have three clues. So now we can trigger this ability here on the search for Agent Harper. Uh, investigators may spend X clues as a group to reveal the top X cards of the leads deck. So we can reveal three cards, draw one of them, shuffle the rest into the deck along with the top card of the encounter deck. So let's do that. Let's spend three clues. Oh, and we did... Oh, we didn't investigate. Never mind. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, so we, we get to look at three cards of the leads deck. So I'm going to have to actually probably write this down because I don't think there is any other way I can uh, actually... Uh, figure this out so we have let's just take a quick look here we've got we've got uh, do I have a better thing in here no I don't all right so we've got Brian Burnham we'll just go BB we got OG the original hotel owner uh, JL BM uh, ZA and RF. And then for locations, we have the jail, uh, the, sh the slums, Sawbone Alley, uh, the house on Walter Water Street, and the, the EOD, and New Church Green. Okay. So let us draw from the uh, draw from this deck and see what we can get. Shuffle it up one more time and Barnabas Marsh, Sawbone Alley, and Brian Burnham. Okay, so we know we've eliminated Brian Burnham and Barnabas Marsh and Sawbone Alley from contention. Okay, not bad. Now we get to draw one of these cards. Uh, parlay, reveal top three, draw one of them. All right, so let's see what these do. Barnabas is three fight, four health, two evade, humanoid suspect elite. Put him into play at the Marsh Refinery with a clue on him, and he's aloof. Parlay, test to willpower. If you fail, take a horror. If you succeed, take control of one of the clues on him. If there are no clues on him, add him to the victory display. 
Well, two willpower is not, not ideal for us. Sawbone Alley, we put it into play. It's a two shroud location with two clues and it's worth victory points. And it connects to, where does it connect? Man, oh man. Uh, connects to the little bookshop and Gilman House. So probably down here in this corner. That's not bad. I mean, it is worth VP and it's two shroud. Uh, each humanoid enemy at Sawbone Alley gets plus two fight and plus two evade. And then we've got Brian here. Brian Burnham, the grocery clerk who wants out. Three fight, three health, five evade. Humanoid suspect elite. We put him into play at the first national grocery with one clue. We discard cards from your hand with at least three total skill icons among them. Parlay, take control of a clue on Brian. Then if there are no clues on him, add him to the victory display. I think we take Sawbone Alley in this case uh, because we can we can get there pretty quickly uh, with the shoes and it's worth VPs. It's a little far away, but it, uh, Barnabas is closer to us, but he has he is aloof and uh, the test on him isn't great. Uh, Peter shouldn't have this horror. We healed that. Okay, so we do that. Then we shuffle, shuffle the rest back into the leads deck with the top card of the encounter deck. All right, so these go back in and this goes in there and we shuffle that up. All right, so we've eliminated some of the suspects. There are still four suspects in the uh, four and five respectively. So we'll need to do this a couple more times, like at least a couple more times. Uh, but that was a free triggered ability. We didn't spend any actions on that. So let's move to Fish Street. Let's play the old key ring. Um, and then we can discover the clue here and then head over to Sawbone Alley and hopefully grab those two clues and deal another three. So let's uh, investigate with the old key ring we will reduce the shroud value by minus two. So we're going two V zero and we get a minus two. So that's fine. Uh, we succeed, we remove a key and gain this clue. So we have another clue to work with in our, uh, another clue to help us find suspects. Now, man, we wanna get rid of our weakness at some point. Using the old key ring to do that would be very nice. So we need to save our resourceful, at least try to save our resourceful so we can uh, use that to get an old key ring back. That would be very good indeed. There is look what I found. Now that is super helpful. That is very good indeed. So theoretically, we could get rid of our weakness now but what I'm gonna do is go back, I'm gonna go over to Sawbone Alley and uh, so we can go move shoes to Gilman House, Sawbone, investigate, grab two clues, be in a position next turn to um, spend another three clues to uh, hopefully rule out some more suspects. All right, Mythos phase, five of six, and we are coming up upon uh, advancing next turn. We draw another Initiate of Dagon. Um, 
Where do we want to dump the initiate? We don't need to deal with the initiate this turn because she's going to gain a doom anyway and it's the witching hour, so no biggie. Uh, we could put her on the little bookshop. It's got two clues. She's easier to deal with when she's got some doom on her. So maybe let's put her here. We're headed back that way anyway. So we'll put her there and then it's at the end of the round we place a doom on her. All right. So uh, move. Uh, we're going to uh, shoes. 6v3. Uh, we succeed. So we get to the Gilman house. Move to Sawbone Alley. Okay, so now we want to fail this test by two or by two or less. Um, We could draw a couple more cards with Unrelenting. Or we could throw a Take Heart to it. Okay, we need a resource. That's an issue. I don't really want to wait a turn, but we ha we don't have the resources in order to uh, pull off the liquid I found here. And I don't really want to investigate the hard way. Um, so... The timing could be key here. If this test fails, the performing investigator draws two cards and gains two resources. Fast play after you uh, fail a skill test by two or more, or two or less, you discover two clues at your location. So I think if I'm timing this properly, I can commit take heart. If I fail the test, I draw two cards and gain two resources, which I could then use to power the look what I found. I believe is how that works. The, word, the, the problem is the wording is slightly different. The one is if this test fails and play after you fail a skill test by two. I think the timing works out, so we're going to do this. I could be wrong. The timing may, the ti there may be a timing issue here, but I think it works out because they're both, I get to play both cards after I fail a skill test. So we are going to investigate 2v2. Chaos Bag says, of course the Chaos Bag throws a zero at us. So I am going to use uh, my ability again to pull that clue, uh, to pull Take Heart back. And um, we gain a clue. So rather than gain two clues, we gain one. So I guess we can save, we can do the old key ring here, then save uh, Look What I Found for the Little Bookshop. That's that's a plan. So that was kind of unexpected. Again, and we avoided the time. Even if that timing issue wasn't going to work in our favor, we did avoid it. So uh, in the end, uh, inquiring mind, three wild skill icons like the looks of that. 
And there is a clue at our location, so that's good. Now we are advancing. I assume the hunting night gaunts are going to start showing up. Uh, so we advance. Let's see what happens here. Followed. The town of Innsmouth grows more and more hostile with each day that passes. The townsfolk have caught on to your presence and perhaps even the reason for your visit. Shuffle the set-aside winged one and both hunting nikons into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. Hey. If a decision to stick together is listed under Memories Recovered in your campaign log, after several days of investigation, you meet with Agent Dawson to, ch to check in with him. He shows you a figurine of emerald stone depicting some sort of aquatic monstrosity, a piece of heart-shaped amber embedded in its center. After the days you have spent investigating and researching this foul place, the creature is oddly familiar to you. I'm glad I roped you in on this case, Dawson says. It's looking less and less like the mob work, like mob work with each passing hour. Yeah, the mob tends not to carry around emerald stones depicting aquatic monstrosities. Uh, let's stick together from here on out. Choose an investigator to take control of the set-aside Thomas Dawson story asset for the remainder of the scenario who does not take up an ally slot. Well, that is the best of both worlds there. So first off, let's shuffle the winged one in Night Gaunt into the deck. So these are going into the deck. We are getting ourselves a Thomas Dawson, who does not take up an ally slot. What does he do? Plus one willpower and plus one combat. That's pretty good. And after an enemy attacks an investigator, even if the attack was canceled, we can exhaust Thomas to draw a card. Yeah. But he's got two health and three sanity. The plus one willpower is very nice. I will uh, definitely take that. Okay. So we did that. And that is the end of that nonsense. Agenda 2A, Growing Suspicion. Again, it is uh, the enemy out for blood. Hint, if you do not make an accusation by the time this agenda advances, you will run out of time. Uh, this thing should have a doom. Uh, actually, it had a doom on it, and then it was removed due to the uh, Growing Suspicion, or due, due to the advance of the deck. Uh, so we've got seven rounds to make an accusation. We draw an encounter card, which is the Priest of Dagon. Any empty location. When the Priest of Dagon would be defeated or evaded, if there is no doom on it, instead heal all damage from it, ready it, and place one doom on it. At the end of the round, and if Priest of Dagon is ready and there is no doom on it, place one doom on it. When the Priest of Dagon would be evaded, or defeated or evaded, we put a Doom on it. So really beating this guy up is the best way to go. He's very time consuming. Like you have got to hit, hit, hit him twice or once, I don't have a weapon, so I'm pretty much hitting him twice, and then, and then he's gonna heal everything, and then I gotta do it again. That's kind of annoying. Uh, so let's put him at the grocery store, since we're in this neighborhood. So the priest of Dagon has gone to the grocery store to uh, to purchase himself some stuff. Uh, I don't know what a priest of Dagon might need at the grocery store. Some 1920s Cheetos or something like that. He's, but that is uh, that is the mythos phase. So um, now we were going to do some investigating here. Uh, let's use the key ring to investigate. 
So we're going uh, 2v0. We draw an elder sign. Okay, well, that's nice. Uh, I can commit a skill. Um, I don't think I can commit any of these skills. Commit only to an ability, skill test from an ability. Yeah, so I can't commit any skills. So I get nothing there, but I do get this clue. That is my first action. Okay. Uh, so now what we can do, uh, free triggered ability, we can go and look for suspects again. So let's do that. We've got three clues. We might as well. So... We have, uh, did I shuffle these? I'm gonna shuffle these just in case I didn't shuffle these. Uh, we got Athera, Robert, and Zodak. Okay, so Athera, Robert, and Zodak. All right, so we know, we know our kidnapper is Joyce Little. We don't know who the we don't know who the uh, where the suspect is. All right, so now we have to draw one of them. Uh, so a thera pro proprietress of the hotel is three fight. Th Five, evade, three, uh, three agility, uh, three evade, three fight, five health, three evade. Revelation, uh, humanoid suspect elite, put Athera Gilman into play at Gilman House with one clue on her, spend three resources to parlay, take control of the clue. Uh, she is aloof. And then if there are no clues on her, add her to the victory display. Robert's way over in the harbor, test two agility. If we fail, we take a damage or we can grab a clue on him. Zodak is at the bridge. Uh, test three agility, we can take a clue. So let's throw Athera at Gilman House and we'll put a clue on her. All right. And then, now I'm gonna make sure I do shuffle this time because I'm not sure if I did the last time. That goes in there, we shuffle that up and away we go. Okay. So we know Athera is at the hotel. So we know Joyce Little, but we don't know where. So I'm not too sure how this works, whether you, um, like what if we just get half? Is that a thing you can do? Just get half the half of it right? Let's go in and uh, we did use the key ring, so that is there. Uh, we can go in and beat up this this uh, initiate. She's a little tough, but not not overly tough. And we've got we've got uh, Thomas Dawson on our side, so we have five combat at the moment, which is pretty good. We want the key ring back. So would a resourceful be ideal right now? I don't think we used our ability on that one. No, we didn't. So we could go in, commit an unrelenting, seal the bad tokens for us, draw two car, uh, seal the bad tokens for us, and then um, uh, 
Yeah, I think that's what we do. So let's move into the little bookshop. Uh, we engage her, let us commit resourceful and unrelenting. Uh, we are going to seal. Now, what are we at? Five, six, seven with the grizzly totem. Seven v four, so we need to seal the fours. So let's do that. So that's a four, and these two are fours. So we seal those tokens. on there and we're going four five six uh, no four five six seven v four but we have uh, sealed the fours we get a cultist. That's a minus two. If you fail, place a doom on the nearest enemy. We will pull unrelenting back to our hand. Dump those back in. We succeeded, so we will pull the old key ring back to our hand for the unrelenting. And she is dead. Okay, so how do we deal with this guy? Man, what a pain in the butt. Because we just have to fight him a lot. I mean, it's probably worthwhile to kill him because he's such a pain in the butt, but it's a lot of actions to kill this guy the way I'm currently, uh, what I've currently got. Cost me two actions to kill him once, then another two actions to kill him again. Oh, maybe I can't kill him. Oh, if there is no doom on it, okay. So as long as he has doom on him, we can kill him. Okay, well, that makes more sense. Okay, he seemed a little too too awesome there. So uh, that is fine. So we can kill him. We draw another copy of Take Heart. Uh, we go to the Mythos phase. So this guy gets a doom. And we draw a Hunting Shadow. So we either spend a clue or take two damage. We take another two damage. And it is our turn. Now, uh, we want... We're going to try to fail a test here. We're going to try to fail a skill test at the Little Bookshop. Oh, but that's bad. Failing skill tests at the little bookshop is bad. Um, Cause that dilutes the leads deck, which we don't really want to do. So I think we play our key ring again and just investigate the old-fashioned way. So investigate using the key ring. We get a minus four. If you fail, place one clue. We succeeded. And we remove a key, and then we will do it again. Oh, crap. Pull an auto fail. 
So after we fail a skill test here, we have to shuffle the top card into the leads deck. That sucks. Okay, well that that kind of blows. We we were doing okay. I mean, we had That was the only token that could have hurt us, so it did. Uh, we go, we draw another copy of Unrelenting. Three of seven doom. Time is starting to get tight. There's a hunting night gaunt. Right. Let's evade the, the hunting. Well, yeah, we need to evade the hunting night gaunt. Uh, so we're going to go 6v1. We could draw a couple cards with Unrelenting if we wanted to. But our hand is OK. Yeah, let's do it. Let's play Unrelenting and the Grizzly Totem. We'll commit the Grizzly Totem and Unrelenting. We're going to seal the... Um, we'll seal the good tokens this time. On Unrelenting. Um, and we'll add a to we'll add to the grizzly totem, and so we're going six, seven, eight v one. So we sealed all the goodies, so we get to draw two cards. Track shoes and the old key ring. Okay, that's good. Um, we draw a chaos token. We get a minus four, which is doubled. How do we fail that skill test? That is amazing. Uh, it is doubled to minus eight. I should have committed one more card, I guess, but I didn't. So uh, we will pull Unrelenting back to our hand. Uh, we fail because we're my we were eight. Six, seven, eight, minus eight is zero. So yeah, we needed one more. We should have committed one more card. We should have committed the track shoes. Oh well, that was a mistake on my part. So we have to do this again. We have two actions remaining. Uh, evade. I'm just gonna go six V. Six V one. Uh, we'll commit track shoes to go 7v1. Uh, we get a minus 1, so that's a minus 2. So he is evaded this time. And then we will investigate using the uh, old key ring. And we get a minus 2, which is fine. So we grab this clue. All right. Um, and the key ring goes away, but we have another key ring. So, um, we've got one, I think at this point, we have one more 
Uh, we can grab the clue on a on a Thera easily enough using the parlay action on her. We don't have to engage her. We just have to parlay with her. And then um, we take that clue, then we spend three, and I think that's probably all we're going to get in terms of uh, clues. And we can also probably investigate Gilman House so we can drop our key ring there, investigate it, clear that, uh, clear our weakness. And we need to deal with this chump, which we can do too at some, we've got a couple turns. So that's what we're gonna do. So we've got to discard a card. Um, ooh, Belly of the Beast. Uh, if we evade an enemy by two or more, we can discover a clue. That would clear the grocery store. I think we pitch a take heart in this case, because, uh, man, this deck is fun. I'm enjoying this deck a lot. Uh, he will engage us. And that is going to be our turn. So there is f four of seven doom. Is this connected to the grocery store? It is. Okay. Just wondering if we go deal with him first. Probably. Evade, move. I don't have a way of... Um, evade, move, and I won't have enough to kill the priest. But I do, I can evade, move, and deal with Athera. So I think we go this way, and then we head to the grocery store next turn, kill the priest. So yeah, that's our plan. So we draw an encounter card first. Uh, obscuring fog, that's fine. Glad we cleared that location when we did. All right, we now can try to evade this guy again. Get my hands sorted out here the way I like. Um, we're going 6v1 currently. We might as well use an unrelenting here, right? to seal the, fo the fours. Uh, yeah, let's look at, uh, so we'll get rid of that, and that, and that. Uh, so we will seal these on unrelenting for this action. So we're, we are uh, invest, uh, evading. Oh, come on! Frickin' Jesus. Minus six, and we were at six. Gee whiz. Man, that's happened now twice. There were only two minus threes in the bag. Or maybe three, but uh, now we can't do that. Um, 
I guess we're just evading 6v1. And we get a plus one now, of course, when we don't need it. Um, I feel like we have to go deal with the priest at this point. We're gonna take an attack, but that's that's nothing. We've got enough soak to deal with that. Um, we'll move in and engage the priest. Uh, does this do anything? No. Okay. So. Peter will take the horror and he'll take the attack and we draw Silas's net. Uh, I'm going to get rid of another take heart. What does Silas's net do? You get plus one for this evasion attempt. If you succeeded Double evade. Okay, yeah, it's all right, I guess. It's not overly helpful at the moment because we need to kill this dude. All right, um, at the, no, we can't heal Peter yet. Uh, we go to, come on, machine. Work with me. Oh, now it's just like I'm locked. Come on. Okay, there we go. So there is five of seven doom. Encounter card is Innsmouth Look. Put Innsmouth Look into play in your thread area. You get minus one intellect and minus one sanity and you gain the deep one trait test three to discard the insmith look okay so that's all right i guess it doesn't hurt us. it doesn't hurt us badly uh now we need to kill this chump so i guess what we could do here We're four. Uh, play an unrelenting to, uh, or do we evade him and grab that clue? Or do we just kill him? We need a clue. which we can get next turn if we go to Athera. Or we can get it now by evading this guy and then attacking him. But the deck is kind of, the Chaos Beg's kind of nasty. Um, I mean, theoretically, what we could do would be evade him with Inquiring Mind. If we succeed by two, we play Belly of the Beast, which gets us the clue we need. Then we can trigger the free triggered ability to see what we get in terms of uh, suspects and hideouts and whatnot, and then uh, we can kill the priest. Yeah, let's do that. I want to try it. Maybe I can do it this round. So we'll go inquiring mind. So we're four, five, six, seven, eight, nine versus three. A minus four puts us at five versus three. which is succeed by two, so we're okay. We get a minus four, of course. Uh, and if we failed, we would have placed a clue. So we were uh, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, minus 4 is 5, puts us 2 up against the priest, so he is evaded. And we will play Belly of the Beast to discover the clue here. All right, we've discovered the three clues. Now let's use the free triggered ability to spend those three clues to, now I know I did shuffle it this time, so uh, we get New Church Green, Brian again, and a locked door. So we've only eliminated so we know it's Joyce Little, but we don't know where she did it. Hmm. We know it's Joyce Little, but we don't know where. Uh, I think we draw a new church green. Uh, yeah, we don't need the locked door either of these guys. So we do that. Uh, that goes in, those two go back in, we shuffle this, New Church Green shows up. It is the square, which is right where the priest is, up here. So it's close by. It's worth VPs again. Um, all right. So, we need to get rid of our, so it's worth VPs, so we can get two VPs. At New Church, we can get another VP at New Church Green. Is New Church Green connected to First Grocery? No, probably not. Eh? Oh, it is. Okay. Um, hmm. The question is, do we have the time? Do we have enough time to trigger that? I'd like to kill the priest. We're five. Five V three, which isn't particularly good. shuffle that lead deck again just to make sure I've done it um, what's the trick here if I move to new church green yeah it's a double action though Tough to fail this one by two. Maybe we leave the priest. I just don't like that. Like, we'd have to make two attacks at bad odds. But if we move here, we could discover two clues. We go to six of seven doom, we'd be able to make one more check of the deck and then accuse.
but that's at the end of the round so we're we're really running like right up to the edge so we either accuse at the end of this round or next round if we kill the priest we get an extra round but we don't really have the goodies to do it we could commit Silas's net, add an extra wild icon to it, which would put us at 7v3. Man, this is a tough choice. think given how bad the chaos bag like there's a lot of minus threes and minus fours in this bag and i just feel like i don't have the goods to teal with the priest so if we go here we can try to clear this location Let's play an unrelenting, seal the minus fours. We'll seal the minus fours. Um, man, if we commit, it's really hard to judge how we can just get seal that one and this one so we'll seal those oh, it didn't say didn't seal the one token I wanted to seal oh it did where did it go Oh, there it is, just behind, okay. So we wanna fail this test. We're, right now we're going 2v3. So let's commit Silas's net to go 3v3. Let's add a wild icon to it to go 4v3. Oh, it's just so risky. Yeah, 4v3. Oh, that was bad. I think I screwed up there. I wanted the two clues and I went 4v3 thinking I'd be okay. So I just get a clue. I pull unrelenting back to my hand. Shoot. Well, I think we accuse now. We accuse, we grab the clue, we grab this clue, we try to get rid of our weakness, so we're at least getting two VPs regardless of what happens. Um, yeah, I think that's what we have to do. So we get a quick thinking, where were you? Oh, that would have been sweet. Uh, he moves here. The hunting knight gaunt moves to the grocery store with the priest to have some Cheetos. Um, we 
now we there's four five Uh, the problem is, is there anything in the deck? Is there anything in the deck that can add a doom? Is the question. Because we'd be at six of seven. We can still get another clue. I mean, we know it's Joyce, so there's that. Uh, Peter shouldn't have a doom um, horror on him. Um, problem is we'd need, we're looking for three locations. I say we just, let's just do it. I, I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's anything in the encounter deck that can kill me. Yeah, we're gonna do it. At the end of the round, we're gonna, we're gonna make our uh, accusation. Okay, we know who did it. We just don't know where. So that is going to be the question here. So read scenario interlude, the accusation. The accusation. The time has come for you to re reveal your hand. You've retraced Agent Harper's steps as best you can and learned a lot about Innsmouth and its citizenry. Perhaps with this information, you can narrow down where Harper is now. But if you aren't swift and decisive, the kidnapper will surely discover you are on to them. You have only one chance to get this right, one chance to locate Harper and surprise her kidnapper. If you are wrong, it's back to square one or worse. Okay, well, let's read the campaign guide and see how bad this is going to be for us. We are taking a risk here. I guess we've got a one in four shot of guessing the right spot. All right, so using the knowledge you've gathered, you must make an accusation in attempt to locate who kidnapped Alina Harper and where she is hidden. In order to make this accusation, the player must choose one suspect enemy and one hideout location from among the options listed on the reference card. The suspect cannot be an enemy who is in play. The hideout cannot be a location in play. Okay, so we are accusing Joyce Little, but where is she? Joyce Little, I think, where would Joyce Little hide out? We know she's not at Sawbone Alley or New Church Green. I think from a thematic standpoint, she's got to be at the Esoteric Order of Dagon. That's my pick. She's at the, Joyce Little is a cultist hanging out at the Esoteric Order. That is what we're going with. So let's see what we do now. Uh, once the accusation has been made, reveal the suspect and the hideout uh, in your campaign log. Circle the names. Okay. If neither card matches your accusations, we must immediately resign. Well, we know that's not true. We know. We know it's Joyce. Is it the esoteric order? No, she was at the jail. What would she be doing at the jail? The jail is so unthematic. All right, so she was at the jail. But we had, like, I mean, we had a one in four shot, so what can we do? All right, if only one of the two cards matches, the investigators are partially correct and may proceed, but they have angered the citizens of Innsmouth during their careless investigation. Flip over the finding agent Harper reference card and spawn the enemy on its other side at the Innsmouth Square. Uh, if both cards match your accusation, the investigators are correct and may proceed. Okay, so the mob, the angry mob, 
has appeared. The mob has Hunter, Massive, and Retaliate, 8 health. Cannot make attacks of opportunity. So we want to try to evade the mob, if at all possible. All right. Uh, what else do we have to do? We have angered the town because we didn't know she was at the jail. In order to set up the final act and agenda, do the following. Advance the act directly to the set aside act 2a uh, this one okay advance the agenda direct to the set aside 3a okay so this goes away so i guess we skipped an act we skipped 2a which would have defeated us i guess so that's not a big deal uh what else do we do here uh, agenda. Put the hideout location that is beneath Finding Agent Harper into play. Add one additional clues to that location. Place the set aside Alina Harper story asset beneath this location to indicate this is where Alina has been captured. So the jail is over here. Okay, well, that's, that's not awful. Uh, there are two clues there. Uh, let's go get Alina. Okay, so Alina is hiding out there with her kidnapper, the bookseller. Uh, add one additional clue per investigator. Place the set aside there. Spawn the suspect enemy that was fi beneath Finding Agent Harper at that location, ignoring their revelation ability. For the remainder of the scenario, this enemy is referred to as the kidnapper. Remove the leads deck from the game. You are now ready to proceed with the final act and agenda. So what does Joyce do here? Joyce has fought... She's a bookseller with five combat, with five fight, three health, three evade. Parlay test, three willpower. If you succeed, take control of the clue on Joyce. Then if there are no clues on her, add her to the victory display. So that's fine. Why is she so tough? Why is Joyce like this beefy bruiser of a, of a bookseller? And I guess now we're ready to finish this scenario. Hmm. Okay, well, I guess... Let's find out what we have to do. So Agenda 3A, Frantic Pursuit... My frantic running ceased before I had covered my block, for at my left I began to hear something like the hue and cry of organized pursuit. There were footsteps and guttural sounds, and a rattling motor wheezed south along Federal Street. Forced, if you defeat a suspect enemy other than the kidnapper, take control of each clue. Okay, seven doom threshold. Rescue. All of your evidence leads here. You must rescue Agent Harper at all costs. The kidnapper loses aloof and gains plus one health per investigator, and we cannot parlay with her. If either the kidnapper is, on, is in the victory display or there are no clues on Alina Harper's location, advance. Okay, so she has four health. Five fight, though. That's pretty tough. 
but there's only two clues at the Innsmouth Jail. And it's worth VPs, so clearing it would be good. So what we would like to do, ideally, is clear New Church Green for the VP. Then we need to clear our weakness. And then we need to clear Innsmouth Jail. Can we do all that? It's a good question. We've got this mob to deal with. We can evade the mob. Evading the mob is not that hard. But we also have the Night Gaunt, which is annoying. All right, well, uh, that should not have flipped. Okay. Man, four shroud location. It's so it's too bad it's not like Sawbone Alley or something like that. We've got a bad location, but we do have a look what I found. So if we can jack our jack our investigation just right, we can discover two clues there. So we go to the mythos phase. Two of seven doom. We get a crypt chill. Um How much do I care about the Crypt Chill? Not a great deal. We can lose the Cryptic, uh, the Grizzly Totem. We're 3v, 3v4. We need to hang on to that. Look what I found, like the like it's the our lifeblood here. Uh, yeah, we'll just go three v four. What a time to pull a plus one. Nice. Okay. Well, we don't lose the uh, grizzly totem. We pass that thanks to uh, Agent Dawson's uh, smarts. Okay, we need to clear this location. God, we need a weapon. Where are my meat cleavers? Um, we've got a couple hunters on the table now. That's the problem. All right, I'm going to play the key ring. I'm not sure if I have enough time to do this. We don't need to evade the mob. I'm going to take two damage and two horror. Um,
Let's use the key ring. Uh, we don't do that yet. Uh, we're going to commit that and this. So we're going to reduce this to a 1, and then we're going to go 4v1. Two, three, four, V one, and we're going to seal the fours. Now, it would be really nice to get an extra an extra action out of this, but I don't think that's going to happen. But we're going 4v1. Uh, Chaos Bag says, gives us a plus one. You have got to be kidding me. Okay, so we succeed by two. So we get an extra action. Um, we can pull unrelenting back to our hand. We get this clue. We get an extra action because of quick thinking. Uh, so we'll do that. Now, what we need to do is clear our weakness. So we will move. Uh, we will use the shoes. That's another plus one. What is going on here? Holy cow. Uh, so we clear to Gilman House. No, uh, we will go. Is Fish Street connected to the jail? That's the question. Yes, it is. OK, we want to stay away from the that stupid night gaunt. So we go to the bridge. We investigate using the old key ring. We get a tablet, which is minus three. And if you fail, you take a horror. We don't fail because it's zero. We get rid of our weakness. All right. We got rid of our weakness. We got rid of that. Um, Night Gaunt moves, Mob moves, we take a damage and a horror, uh, which uh, he will take for us. Okay, so next move, we move into the jail. to uh, we get another quick thinking okay we can win this next turn Uh, we go to the Mythos phase. Three of seven doom. Uh, this should be in our discard pile. The winged one. Uh, that's unfortunate. Okay. 
the winged one has arrived. So we need to evade. X is the shroud value of the winged one's location. Takes one fewer damage except from range firearms and spell. Oh, we haven't seen that in a while. The giant manta ray in the sky. All right. Um, do we have enough to, to pull this off is the question. We've got three actions. Uh, we are evading 6v2. We get a zero, so this guy is evaded. We are going to move into Joyce Little's location. She engages us. Uh, yeah, Peter still has a damage uh, horror on him. So here's the trick. We need to pass that. We need to fail this skill test so we can grab these two clues to win the game. For sure, we're committing on quick thinking. We're going to take a horror from Joyce to do this action. Uh, so we're going to go 4v4. Or do we go 3v4? There are just so many ways that this can go wrong. This is probably our last shot at this too. We're going to commit an unrelenting. We're going to go 4v4. But we're going to seal the good tokens this time. After you commit this to a skill test, search the chaos bag for up to three tokens. So we want to seal good tokens this time. Because we don't want to draw zeros. Lots of minus threes in there. There are a lot of minus threes in that deck. So let's draw, to, we get to draw two cards. We get a resourceful and we get a look what I found. Okay, so we're gonna commit 
the resourceful. We're going to go 5v4. Let's see. It's up to the chaos bag. Minus three. Uh, so we drew a minus three, so we dropped to th uh, two v four. So we fail the skill test. We play look what I found, and we discover the two clues, and we win. Ho ho ho! That was close. That was close. Oh, shit, I forgot. I forgot I had the Innsmouth look in play. God damn it. Uh, now I gotta go back and take a look and see if I, f I screwed this up. Jesus! Okay, uh, we're looking at New Market Green. Uh, let's see, where did I do that? Because what I would do, I would commit the other look what I found instead of the uh, resourceful on this one. It's just the other tests. That's the problem. We drew plus ones, didn't we? Um... Yeah, okay. So when we investigated New Church Green, when did we draw the oh, when did we draw Innsmouth look? That's what I need to find out. Because we drew a plus one for that test, and then we drew a plus one for that test. So we would have been fine on both of those tests. I just need to figure out where the, I drew the bloody Innsmouth look. Um... Couldn't have been that long ago. Was it before or after I, <laughs> I did my accusation? We drew crept gel. We passed that with the plus one. We discovered the clue. We discovered the clue at New Church Green. We used the track shoes. Oh, so it was pretty far, but it was pretty far back. Huh. There it is. Okay. Uh, that was turn 11. Okay. So let's, let's see if this made any difference. So Innsmouth look. 
I evaded the priest of Dagon, grabbed belly of the beast. I went to New Church Green. I did my thing. Um, I sealed those. I moved Silas's net to the table. Oh, that was the one where I went too high. Okay, so the new church green test that I did, I was at, I think I was at four, yeah, because I committed Silas's net and used the, the grizzly totem. So I was at four versus three and I was expecting to fail it so I could play Look What I Found, but I didn't. So, theoretically, I actually hurt myself there because I had a Look What I Found that I wanted to play, but didn't because I thought I passed it because I went 4v3, then I drew a minus one, so I was 3v3, but I was actually... 3v3 and I drew a minus one so I failed that skill test then I moved uh, then the next test I then I did my thing I did my accusation I played the old key ring I drew the plus one, so that's fine. Then the next test, then I went to Fish Street Bridge and I drew another plus one. But that wouldn't have mattered because I used the, uh, the key ring there. Um, so I was technically 1v0 there. So then I would have, um, I would have committed, knowing that I needed to be plus three, I would have committed the look what I found, um, instead of the resourceful at this test. Uh, in order to be up enough. So what I'll do to fix this is I will say that I did not get the clue at, um, at uh, New Church Green. So for forgetting the Innsmouth look, we will take a, uh, we will take a one XP penalty. So on that final test, I would have committed the, I would have drawn the look what I found with the unrelenting. I would have committed it. So I was at um, 5v4. Then I drew the minus three. Then I played the other uh, look what I found in order to pass. Okay, so that's where we stand. Bit of a screw up there because I, for, totally forgot about Innsmouth. Look, I was thinking about the stupid uh, minus one sanity, but wasn't thinking about the intellect. My bad, uh, but we do end up um, clearing that location. So we'll take the one VP penalty. So we end up with, I think, two VP out of the whole deal, probably, which isn't super, but I guess. Um, and we'll go from there. So let's just take a quick peek at the uh, 
at the uh, finale here. Man, I even put Innsmouth look right in my bloody player, so I had to remember it. Uh, so we, we succeed, we flip this over. Uh, if Joyce was the kidnapper, we go to R4. So let's see. Despite her situation, Joyce does little to resist once you have a restraint. Yeah, she's got five fight, though. She's like a freaking bodybuilder who could ba body slam poor Silas. She seems resigned to her fate, her gaze elsewhere as you question her. Believe me, if I'd had another method for getting you to back off, I would have used it, she says to Agent Harper. But you were getting too close, so I did what had to be done. I don't understand. Too close to what exactly, Miss Little? Harper asks. There is a secret at the heart of this town, a secret that brings us wealth, a secret that brings us power, a secret that brings us... She pauses to find the right word, closer to our destiny. And what kind of secret is that? Harper probes. Joyce smirks and shakes her head. What makes you think I would ever share that with outsiders? Because you assaulted a federal agent and you don't tell me what I want to know. Your destiny is going to be the inside of a lonely prison cell. You watch Ms. Little's confidence shatter. She gulps down the last of her pride. A bead of sweat drips down her forehead. It's star started with the order she explains quickly so each investigator earns experience equal to the victory x value of each card in the victory display we record that under unspent experience and yeah so we earn two xp due to the one xp penalty we tagged ourselves with for forgetting the insmith look at that one location where we would have failed when we would have succeeded uh, it didn't affect us at the other two because we would have definitely committed the uh, the look what I found we drew. And that's that. So a bit of a mess, unfortunately, there at the end. But uh, I think it's worked out kind of in the end anyway. So that is going to do it for The Vanishing of Alina Harper. Uh, a very enjoyable scenario. A uh, little bit long on the long side. But uh, I think that's to be expected, considering this was the, uh, the first uh, crack at it. Unfortunately, we did miss that one thing toward the end, but I think it all sort of worked out in the end. Uh, if you are a patron of the channel, make sure you stay tuned to uh, the, uh, for the Patreon postgame show, where I will talk a little bit about how I felt my deck performed and uh, how, what I think of this uh, scenario. Uh, otherwise, uh, I will be back uh, shortly with uh, In Too Deep, the third, uh, the third uh, scenario in the Innsmouth Conspiracy Cycle, where we will try to avoid some barricades and see how we do. So uh, that is going to do it for this playthrough. I hope that you enjoyed it and uh, that you will join me again uh, for In Too Deep here in the, uh, in the coming days. Take care. That's going to do it for this episode. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I am also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.